get in touch with and are open to speak with them and just say, you know, it's okay. Just come on back. We're, it's all right. If you want to make it right, then that's all good because we, it's um, the LaRoche family, which is pretty much is the La, it's pretty much the LaRoche family, the Eddington family, who in turn are related to the LaRoche family. And then people in my family were in it as well. And the brother um, Ziad is right here. He is, he is uh, Ziad LaRoche. He is part of that, that family. And so it, it shows how it was family oriented and focused on a certain group of people who they felt like they could get. My sister, Kam Kamar Muhammad, she testified against Malachi York and they tried to bring my brother in, Kush Martinez or Kush Muhammad. And so that's how bringing me in was a part of it, but couldn't get me in. So it shows that it's, fam it's families that were targeted because of their uh, being upset about whatever they would have uh, were upset about. And so that plays a part in just come on back because it's family here who were, who are the family members of the alleged victims. And we're here. We don't hate you. Just, just tell the truth. It's okay. You can tell the truth. Thank you for that. Brother Ibrahim. Okay. Um, we are going to hear from the brother Ziad LaRoche. And again, if you could address, um, not only from the perspective of someone who grew up in the community and what the mentality could be, but the personal impact involving your family that the sister Farah just mentioned. Yes, I'd like to touch on what the sister Farah mentioned earlier about families. Uh, many people know um, the LaRoche family, as she stated, and the Edison family was very much involved in the case. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it came as a shock to me as well because I grew up around my sister. We lived on the property at Fall Fall Shady Dale Road. We were very close. Anything happened, I would have known about it. We walked, she talked to me about problems she had with her mother, with her, some of her friends, you know, and uh, I would have well been aware of it if, it if she says it happened, which I know it didn't happen. Even when she left, she told me her reasons. That's how close we were. She said, I want to go out to public school. I want to take a, uh, learn an instrument, a piano, something she could have done there. But she was taking home school, hardcore learning system. I know personally, but she, bottom line, she wanted to go out there. She wanted to meet people. She wasn't used to the discipline, you know, because we moved so many times. So she was able to see different things, you know what I'm saying? And she didn't realize, like, the sister Fatima touched on the grooming, but I was unnecessary, you know? That was one of the problems she had with my mother. She wanted to go out there and she wanted to party. You know, I learned to bury my anger and I learned not to hate. You know what I'm saying? But the doors is always open. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> and to touch on the conspiracy, I found I, I come to learn that it's deeper, uh, especially involving my family. I have an older brother named Lemuel LaRoche, you know what I'm saying, who is a very close friend of Jacob York. And they've been touched for a very long time. And my sister was a means of being recruited by him. And I come to find out much later, you know. So that's just some of the things I want to touch on. And what would you say, and this could be for anyone, would be the nature of your experience as a child in the community? For instance, throughout the trial and in the media, the picture is painted as if uh, children in the community live some depraved, deprived lifestyle or um, were educationally deficient when we know throughout time, the kid went to public school, people have been sent overseas mm -hmm. to get educated, private school. It was everything was, if those choices were there, like you said, with your sister, she really wanted to do that. Yeah. The opportunity was there. So what would you say was the reality of your life growing up in the community? Well, first of all, those accusations are completely false. In fact, they disgust me because I was born, I was born and raised in this, born in Brookdale Hospital, raised in the community in Bushwick Avenue, you know what I'm saying? And we lived a disciplined and a healthy lifestyle. You were educated. You had 
scholars and teachers imported from other countries to groom us and educate us, taught us the Arabic language, you know what I'm saying, taught us Hebrew. I remember being six years old and given a certificate by Dr. Malagazi York, you know what I'm saying? You gotta excuse me, I'm, I'm really trying to hold back this anger because it's, it's despicable, you know what I'm saying? It really is. And uh, our lifestyle was, I loved it. Everything about it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we was taught everything. We learned a lot about culture. We had a certain type of pride about ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We had a certain bond that can never be severed. Until this day, we still got that bond. Even those who went against them, they always crave it. They want it. They want to be around us. You know, that's why the door is always open. You know what I'm saying? But it's something I, will, I wouldn't give for the world. You know what I'm saying? It's what I love. Okay, it seems as if most of the people who have come out against Dr. York in the case are people who were disgruntled and left. Yes. Do you think that, or any of our panelists, do you think their experiences leaving plays a role in why they came out against Dr. York? Well, personally, I know a lot of them, especially uh, younger than myself, or around my age group, were influenced. Some were disgruntled, you know, like some of my cousins were, but a lot of them were influenced by older people who are a part of the conspiracy. That I know is a fact. I'm not going to mention no names, but I know that as a reality, you know. Like I said, it wasn't until May 8th, and I lived up there, and May 8th was real. I never, ever right. experienced anything like that in my life, and that's something we could touch on another time. But the reality is, yes. Um, everyone who's here today or anybody who's impacted by May 8th, which would be our entire community, should be here to tell our story. Because as a Nuwabian culture, that's a pivotal date in our history that no one can forget. So we ask everybody to be here next week. Because not only will we have panelists, but all the audience, anyone who wants to tell the story of what happened that day, that's putting down our history. So we need everybody to be here next week. That's a very important uh, thing you touched on, brother. Um, for the next uh, issue we wanted to deal with, in the previous segment, we talked about uh, Jacob York being involved in a conspiracy against Dr. Malachi Z. York. Can any of you all share your experiences or any encounters that you had with him and kind of give some insight on him as well? Um, I, I got to know Jacob pretty well. Um, like I said previously, when I met him, I was 16. When I met him, I was 16, and from the moment that I met him, my entire relationship or relationship with him was based around clubs, partying, and liquor. <laughs> that's, ba that's basically all he really did. Um, and so he was that type of person where it was no hold bar, anything goes. It didn't matter. You want you want to sleep with that person? Okay, y'all can go upstairs to that room and it's okay. You know, and so that's the type of person that Jacob is. Like I said before, he tried to get me to have sex with people and witness people at making advances to me in a ve in very, very um, explicit advances. And I'm 16 and 17 years old, and at that time, I had never even had any type of sexual relationship with anybody. And to ha for him to see the how uncomfortable and afraid it made me, and he would look at me and just laugh it off, and think and think it was 